Uh, it's a question, I, I suppose, working in the media that I find fascinating. There's been this growing debate about, you know, is the only hope for the newspaper industry uh, to become a sort of philanthropic project that, you know, people you know, who, who have the world, you know, Gates should buy the Seattle paper, you, you should buy the LA Times. Look, I, I, look newspaper, no one's figured out a good business model for newspapers as yet, and I'm not sure it's going to happen in the next few years. Uh, I think uh, uh, you can't afford to lose newspaper journalism. Uh, you can't afford to lose all the investigative reporting and other things that sometimes we like, sometimes we don't. It's part of our democracy. So newspapers ought to be owned by foundations or wealthy families not looking for any real uh, great economic return. You've got that down in the St. Petersburg paper with the, uh, I forget the name of the foundation down there. You've got the Guardian in London. Hmm. So there's some examples of that, and we need more of it. But I mean, you've also got in London now a former KGB spy that owns the London Evening Standard. That's true. That's um, true. You've got. Uh, I hope percent... he's a reform spy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he claims to be, and um, I mean, you've got the prospect, I guess, of the New York Times falling into the hands of Carlos Slim. Um, well, I wouldn't say falling into hands. He just made an investment there. I don't. I mean, would that worry you? Would it worry me if Carlos Slim owned the New York Times? Mm. <laughs> From what I know, he's a decent fellow. He's uh, been involved in some charitable activities, not only in Mexico, but a little bit in the United States, mm. including maybe helping the Broad Institute. So. Mm. <laughs> now, it was talked about a, a couple of years ago that you might be interested in buying the LA Times, and I guess since, since then... I've uh, regained my sanity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the guy who had the fortune, misfortune to buy it uh, might be looking to sell it again, presumably. I don't. Well, as you know, the Tribune Company uh, filed under Chapter 11. Uh, the creditors are pr probably going to try to sell it at some point. But you've really lost interest now. Well, I'd like to see our foundation and others join forces to own the LA Times. Hmm. Uh, Los Angeles, uh, you know, if you look at the great newspapers, you look at the New York Times, Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. And, and then you used to look at, uh, at, at the LA Times sort of next. Well, I'm not sure it can be a national paper, or have the aspirations that ones have, but it certainly can do a great job uh, in, in California and affiliate perhaps with the Washington Post or others. To, uh, no one can afford all these overseas bureaus. I, I, I suppose as a journalist, you, you look back at the history of proprietors wealthy proprietors, and it's not been you know, great for, for journalism in a way. And I guess The Guardian is a model in Britain which you know, is actually an organization that doesn't have this proprietor, this beaver brook, or, the, or whatever, breathing down the neck of the journalist. And I guess you know, we're faced with extinction as an industry, possibly, at the moment. So I guess any, anyone, any port in a storm. But what, you know, would there be a way that you could see this being structured so that the independence of the journalism really is protected by the foundations rather than you know, giving a, a chance for the proprietor well, to it, actually have I their views it, supported. I, I think if you have foundations involved, several of them, uh, they're more likely to have uh, allow total journalistic freedom. Than so you feel it needs to be several foundations coming together, that's the best well, protection? Well, not necessarily. It, mm. it, it, it depends which ones. It depends which families. Which ones shouldn't we have in charge? <laughs> well, the Madoff family. <laughs> I won't go beyond that. 